Playmaker is an all-time top rated Bolt has asset, asset store for some years stars now and has never managed to break thousands of great ratings. Unity Bolt saw the amazing hit on the block and it's making a lot of people's heads wired. It's only been there some years, but so far there haven't been any notable time in development. Bolt, Firewatch, Hollow, Night, Inside, the first the tree, Forest, Hearthstone, My Bolt is very true, true. making games not know much about programs and it will seem very especially hard and also in nature time. That's because there are few documentaries I'm so glad I'm 14 years old and I have a hope to become a dev, so I prefer to but to be honest, this asset is awesome. Game. This asset is awesome. Game. I have tried my best, played, made my life. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. It takes time to learn, but it's worth it for prototype. The best plug you must have by over 60 can't be wrong. Yeah. For it's definitely fine. This is the best playmaker's fan. Best stage. I know basically nothing about coding. Best spot. It's my second plug. It's one of the best visual script. And then it is the best. Very useful plug in the bot. And it's not great. Close. Best very fan of it. This asset is quite useful. Excellent Round 1, Visual Scripting. Let's get this straight. Playmaker isn't really visual scripting. Bolt is more of a visual scripting tool. We can all use the shorthand and just say Playmaker's visual scripting tool. It helps to organize it into a category that helps us better understand its use. But visually scripting something would be like a visual representation for each and every little part of a scripting language which is the way Bolt works. Bolt is a C-sharp analog. Let me say this again. Bolt is a C-sharp analog. That means that for every concept you have to understand in C-sharp, you also have to understand in Bolt. The difference between you learning C-sharp and learning Bolt is a cosmetic one. It's just looks, and to some extent how you move things around and put them together. I've seen this phrase go around, Bolt is C-sharp with a mouse. So instead of having your hands on the keyboard the whole time when you're writing your C-sharp scripts, you're moving your mouse around and clicking and dragging bolt nodes. Playmaker is a finite state machine. While you will find many of the intricacies and control of programming with C-sharp in Playmaker's actions, it is primarily made of actions which batch together common lines of code. Take for example, writing out the code for moving a game object around in Unity, the code would look something like this. Here's where it's getting the input from the keyboard controller, and here's where it uses that information to move the thing around. Game developers write these same lines of code every day, or code that looks very similar to this. It's such a commonly used string of code that you'd think there'd just be a button that pastes that shit in automatically, which is kind of what Playmaker does. Let's look at the same thing done with Playmaker. You would drag and drop in these two actions, and then set the parameters by either dragging and dropping something in, or setting a variable with this drop-down menu. Now, you'll see that these actions are placed in this one little box here. This is a state. Playmaker uses finite state machines as a means of putting all these actions together. You can make more states and string them together like a flowchart. Round 2. High and Low Level Programming An example of low level programming would be binary. Binary is the language of machines. It's a bunch of ones and zeros, which together might produce the letter B, or make the pixel at row 367, column 820, turn blue. I mean, literally it does everything because it's the bedrock of all of our computers. High level programming is when we use those ones and zeros to make tools that then let us use human language, like English, to make stuff. So you might type in commands in a terminal to open a window or application using words in English. Over time, software engineers have stood on the shoulders of their predecessors to write programming languages that more and more resemble human language. C Sharp, for example, is actually considered a high level programming language, compared to others which less resemble human language. So in this way, high level and low level programming is a scale. On one end, you have something that at a glance makes little to no sense. And on the other end, you have something that even a complete beginner could look at and make a pretty good guess as to what is going on. Let's take the scale and put our tools on it. First, you have C Sharp. Even though this is considered a high level programming language, it is the lowest level of the three we're comparing. So it goes all the way to the left. Then you have Playmaker, which compared to stuff like iOS tasks and automations, isn't as high level, but it is the highest level of the three we're comparing. So it goes all the way to the right. Then you have Bolt, which shares all the same API steps as C-sharp, but turns them into nodes instead of lines of code. There's no real reliable way to measure exactly how low level or high level something is, but considering that the difference between C-sharp and Bolt is by and large cosmetic, it would make sense to put Bolt right on top of C-sharp. Now you might be saying, but Steven, the UI for Bolt makes it much easier to understand. To which I say, well, yeah, so does the UI for Visual Studio Pro and many other coding tools that use text prediction, color coding, and other such features. The value in Bolt is in a potential shift in perspective that some people need to begin to learn to program. 
It's the software equivalent of shoving your dog's medicine into a tasty treat, or pretending the spoonful of baby food is an airplane to make sure your child doesn't die of malnourishment. Round three, they both do everything, kinda. You can make homemade finite state machines with Bolt, and you can make custom playmaker actions representing every state of C-sharp the way Bolt does. Round four, performance. If anyone ever gets up in your face claiming some significantly superior performance metric on behalf of either of these, they're splitting hairs or considering some highly specific case. There are a million considerations to performance optimization, and neither of these tools are going to be a deal breaker for building well-performing games on whatever scale. And the winner is... Uh, let's go over some things that you should keep in mind when choosing a tool first. First, do you want to be making your own games or do you want to be working on other people's games? Because if you're trying to get into the industry, if you're trying to start a career in which you would like to work at your favorite AAA game studio as soon as possible, then C Sharp and Bolt might be the better choice for you, at least to begin with. This is because working in a large team in professional settings would likely require you to know the more common programming languages like C Sharp, C++, Python, etc. Bolt is included in this record recommendation only on the assumption that you would use it as a means of eventually moving on to C-sharp. There are cases in which Playmaker has been used in AAA productions, but it's either the director of the project that was the one who chose to use it, or someone else in the team had to make their case for why it should be used. Otherwise, it's not a super common tool in AAA. If, however, you just want to make your own games, maybe make them with some friends, or eventually grow to a small team that you would be the director of, you may want to go with Playmaker. This is because Playmaker is generally easier to learn, so you're quicker to pick it up and you'd be able to iterate games much faster. So for solo developers and small teams, time is everything. And when you're the boss, you get to say which tools are to be used for the project. Next, you should ask yourself, what kind of games do you want to make and do you want to program absolutely everything from scratch yourself? For example, if you want to make a racing game a la Mario Kart, you do well to jump in using Playmaker. You can even design some awesome AI for the NPC drivers. Unless you wanted to implement machine learning into the game, say to teach your NPCs how to drive proficiently, you would have to learn a little bit of C Sharp to make that happen, or find an asset out there with a friendly enough inputs that Playmaker could then talk to. A strange example to illustrate this sort of thing further is chess. Chess is a deceptively complex game to program if you're trying to make a highly skilled computer player. This is because there's some complicated algorithms which run through all the thousands or millions of possible moves the computer could make against you, predicting all the possible moves that you would then make in return, and then only after all of that does it make its move. To program something like that in Playmaker would be less than straightforward. In this case, it would behoove you to learn C Sharp, potentially some other programming language. In other words, for most people, their aspirations are well within the realm of Playmaker. There are plenty of developers who are extremely proficient with C Sharp, but choose to supplement their workflow with Playmaker. Playmaker is an additional tool used by beginners and veteran programmers alike. More than anything, Bolt is like a learning tool for people who want to learn C Sharp. Bolt is something to graduate from. It is a stepping stone at best. Hopefully this video illustrated to you that there is no greatest tool of all time. It's different for all of you, for all of your needs, for all of your learning styles. It's hard to say that any of these are really better, they're just different. So if you're caught up looking for the greatest tool of all time before you start, just know you're chasing an answer that doesn't even really exist. So I would recommend you pick the thing that can get you going and making your first games as soon as possible. Hey, I hope this video was helpful. I know a lot of people have been asking me this question for a very long time, and I always figured I'd do a video of it, so here it is. Anyways, before you go though, I'm working on some game dev courses for Playmaker users. The plan is to sort of do genre by genre, so you can build like a full game of whatever genre that is. And so I'm gonna be giving out early bird coupons, you know, get a little discount if you're one of the first people that gets it. So if you want those, be sure to sign up to the emailing list in the description, there's a link. This is where I'll be sending the coupons as well as like some exclusive stuff like like when Memories of a Spy gets to play testing, I'll probably be hitting people up through that to see if they want to be involved. Otherwise, like, that's it. Like, no spammy bullshit. Like, really, it's just gonna be the discounts, like, when the course comes out, and then, like, a link every now and then. And if you are thinking about getting Playmaker, you don't have it yet, there is a link to get it in the asset store down below. If you use my link, uh, I get a little something something. That helps me out, helps the channel out, and lets me keep doing this more often. Peace.